Hey everybody, welcome back. So this is Marshawn Olanio. For those of you who are coming here for the very first time and listening to me speak, I am a life and relationship strategist. I'm getting on here today briefly because the audio quality for the past two days of me and Keisha um, Harris Stewart's life, the audio was just horrible. But I wanted to come on here and chat a little bit uh, because the information I was information that we were both speaking about was the challenges of being married and then how to become a power couple and the information is actually that important and that I wanted to come back on here and share with you um just the information because for some reason the audio quality was just horrible so we did two lives yesterday and it was basically a a, a continuation one from the other for the first one, if you actually happen to go on there and listen, it was very choppy, the audio. That video was about 45 minutes, so I went back and listened to it. And if you're interested in hearing with what most of the video has to say, around minute 20, the audio just clears up and you can hear both of us clear. So if you're interested, go and listen at about minute 19, 45, minute 20 if you're interested. And then you can actually hear what we're saying and there and then the second one that was just poor qualities altogether but again this is very important information so i wanted to come back and actually give you some of the points so i'm going to put together the challenges of being married the information that we mentioned as well as how to become a power couple and again it's not going to be the same because keisha is not here but i just felt that it was very important for me to come here and speak about this stuff so a few things when you're thinking about the challenges of being married so first of all let's talk about there's always going to be some type of challenge in your relationship, some type of challenge in your marriage. That is just always going to happen. Um, you're going to be either going through something, have just come out of something, or getting ready to go into something. And that's with life, period. So your marriage is no different. You're going to be, I'm going through things. But the specifics that we brought up was power struggle because especially something about being in the relationship in your marriage, especially that first year. <laughs> And especially if you guys do not get it together, the power struggle can go throughout the entire relationship. But um, when you're thinking about power struggle, some of the things that you're actually thinking about and doing is you're always needing to be right. Think about why you always need to be right or you're always letting the other person have it no matter what is actually happening, no matter what was being said, no matter how minute the situation was, there is just something that you need to get off your chest. You always have to have the last word. You always have something to say about everything. Um, you're feeling the, uh, you're trying to fill the other person's shoes or maybe you're like, you know what? I don't feel like doing X, Y, and Z. So because you pissed off, you decide to hold hold out on sex or give them the silent treatment or start doing that tit for tat. That is where you are creating the power struggle within your own relationship. You're creating this tension. You're creating um, the environment where things are just not going as smoothly as they can, as they could go if you would just relinquish some of the power and you needing to keep the power, you needing to have the power, you needing to say the last word, you needing to always be right. That is not something that is going to um, enhance your relationship. That's not something that's going to enhance your marriage. You're only going to be adding added stress and strain to your marriage, to your relationship when that power struggle ensues. You have to be able to relinquish some of, some of that power. A lot of this does go toward um, the women in particular because there are a lot of single women out here, single parents out here, and we're used to doing everything by ourselves. We're used to getting everything done. We're used to being the CEOs of our life everything that happens in it and so whenever we have our spouse our husband come into it we have issues with relinquishing that power because there is an issue with trust there as well because we couldn't trust or you couldn't find anybody to trust everybody that you decided to trust let you down in some shape form or fashion so because that's happening it's really hard for you to relinquish what is actually going on um, in your own marriage. So that is power struggle. Another thing that we brought to attention was the finances. That can be an actual struggle as well, especially if you guys start off and there is little to no money, meaning both of you are making um, basic minimum wage or just above minimum wage, but you have 
everything going on, uh, meaning like the house, the car, the insurance. Maybe you do have ch a child or children, daycare, gas, food, just life in general. So there could be a financial strain within your relationship as well. And, and have you guys talked about how you actually handle your money? Or is it just something that you get, got into the relationship and you assumed that it would be a particular way and now you're quite disappointed that things are not going the way in which you wish they could go or should have gone? Who is spending all of the money? Is there a gambler in the house? Right? And gambling could be any form of gambling, whatever your um, definition of gambling is. It can be anything. Is there somebody that's just going out and spending frivolously? You're always using the credit card instead of, you know, buying with cash. Bringing added stress to the relationship because now you're spending all of this money uh, that you really don't have. And then on top of that, now you're spending extra money because when that credit card bill comes and you still can't pay that, again, you're adding extra strain to your relationship. Do you guys actually have the same financial goals or are they different? So these are definitely some things that you need that you need to discuss and talk about. And then literally where you guys are not dealing with the real of your finances, you're still living in fantasy land about your finances, even though uh, you guys are still just assuming because most time this is this really is one of those tough conversations to have. But we need to have the conversations about finances. Are you guys going to continue to keep your own separate bank accounts like all together? Are you guys going to um, um, get joint accounts? Are you guys going to just get a joint account for the bills and then you both deposit money in there and that'll be your bill account? Like, how are you guys actually dealing with your finances? How are you dealing with your finances in your marriage, in your relationship? The This is definitely a challenge within the relationship. And then sex on top of that can be a challenge, um, especially if you guys work different shifts or if you have young children in the house or if there's some type of illness or um, something where erectile dysfunction is occurring like what's actually happening is she maturing where she's going into menopause or she's having menopausal symptoms etc so what's actually happening with your sex life with young children are the children still sleeping in your bed do you still have toys in there have you made it a toy free zone a no baby zone within your relationship within your bedroom specifically so you guys can actually enjoy one another without the child being around are you even making time for it? Are you guys just having a great enough time with one another, even with the child being around so you can create some type of chemistry so whenever the child goes to sleep, then you two can have adult time together? Or are you just two ships sailing by one another because you work different shifts and then when you do get home, you're not spending that quality time together because as we were mentioning yesterday, Sex for the woman, it starts all up in here, all up in here. So if you are the type of guy that foreplay is out the door, you need to work on your foreplay. And especially if she is telling you, listen, I cannot just have sex just like you. Like, I'm not just going to be ready in that moment. I ha you have to get her in the mood pretty much all day. Like, give her something to think about. I'm not saying you got to text her every five minutes. But give her something to think about throughout the day about what you want to do and how you want to do it so she can start thinking about and planning out her evening. Like, okay, I need to go home and cook. I need to make sure that the kids are together. I need to make sure that I got my personal time, like workout or whatever. Make sure that I'm working on XYZ. Maybe she is, is in school or something. She's planning out her day. Because she knows that with these flirty texts that you are sending or these flirty pictures that you are sending to her, she is able to enjoy the moment when she gets home after the kids have gone to bed and you guys have actually spent some quality time together laughing, kissing, joking, leading up into the bedroom. Now, does this happen every single time? No, but by and large, most women need to be finessed into the bedroom okay and not just that oh i'm ready she should be ready no it don't work like that for women so you have to be understanding about the physical and emotional changes that happen before sex comes into play another challenge that um we discussed the other day was keeping outsiders outside of your marriage what does that actually mean 
all of these people, your your friends, your family, your siblings, your co-workers, all of these people that give you some type of opinion when you feel the need to have to go and share what you're actually going through in your relationship, these are the people that I call the outsiders. And at some point, you have to put a barrier around your relationship and create your relationship with just you and your spouse, your spouse and your kids, etc. But specifically to this, we're talking about just you and your spouse. So keeping as many outsiders out of your relationship, this right here, when you go and having, when you're going out with your friends and everything, you don't have to take the time to bash and put down your spouse when your spouse is not around because you need to vent and get all of this out because here's the thing sis here's the thing bruh you are giving him you are giving her ammunition to use against you later on and when you have passed that situation whatever it happened to be in this moment when you have passed that situation on by and you and your spouse are back on great terms or good terms Guess what? Your friends and family are over there giving you all of the side eye because they remember all of this bad stuff that you told to him to and that you shared with her. And now she's bringing all of this stuff back up into your face. And now you're looking like, well, why, why don't nobody like my spouse? Why don't, nobody, why don't nobody like Jeff? Why don't nobody like Keisha? It's because of all of the bad stuff that you shared with him or with her. And now they're looking like, mm -mm. why do she still deal with this or why do he still deal with that right so at some point you really just need to keep your mouth shut about the things that are happening in your relationship so then you don't have to worry about somebody using your relationship against you later on see i i personally learned this in my first marriage um because one of my sisters was in her marriage and she was going through some things with her spouse like all of us do. And I would hear the chatter from my family members about how he was no good and how he was doing this and everybody was holding grudges against him. And I that right there let me see that when I was going through things in my first marriage, how I needed to myself close my mouth about the things that were happening because the things that you're willing to deal with in your relationship, the things that you're willing to take on is your thing a lot of times the things that you're willing to deal with your friends and family are not willing to deal with and quiet as it's kept a lot of times they're dealing with things that are worse than what you're dealing with however they're ready to talk about all of the things that you're going through so they can keep the light off of themselves and we all know that our friends and family want the best for us they want the best for us so that's not an, um something that we're debating here your friends and family want the best for you. However, when they're not in your situation, it's easier for them to have so many things to say bad about your spouse because there are there is no emotional attachment to your spouse. That's the key. Your spouse. You are the one that has the emotional attachment to your spouse. They do not. So as much as possible, just keep your mouth shut about the things that are happening in your relationship. And so to go back to my first marriage, when I did that, um, I had a great time all the time when I was around my friend, family and friends. My family and friends loved my ex-husband. Obviously, it didn't work out. But the point is, I didn't have to worry about any of the things that they were saying about him, either to my face or behind my back because of all the things that I shared. I didn't share the bad stuff that happened or the things that I deemed to be bad until I left. And they were like, oh, I didn't know that you were going through that. I didn't want you to know. <laughs> I didn't want you to know. That's why you didn't know. Because I remember how you was talking about sis uh, ex-husband. Now he's an ex-husband. So when you was talking about sis ex-husband, I didn't want him to be a part of that, which is why I shut my mouth. So think about keeping all of those outsiders outside of your relationship as much as possible. Now, I'm moving on to how to become a power couple. Some of the things that we spoke about yesterday on how to become a power couple is becoming and how to become a part of a team. See, when we get in these marriages, when we get into these relationships, you're two, you're two, two separate people. And so because you're two separate people, you're really trying to figure out a way to mesh and mend 
and um, connect your relationship as a whole, as one. You are becoming a team. And a, what one of the ways that Keisha was mentioning yesterday on how to become a team is to make sure that you guys are a united front, especially when you're out and about. If somebody tries to come to you and tell you about some of the things that they seen your spouse doing, especially since you know the character of your spouse, you should be able to rebut exactly what they're, what they're saying to you. And even if you don't know what they're talking about, try not to take on what they're saying. So you're, by the time you go back home to your spouse, you're in a rage about all of the stuff that you let seep into your head, that you let this person feel with you. So become a united front when you're out in public. When you get back home, of course you're gonna have some questions with your spouse. Of course you should ask the questions. Of course you should have the conversation. But when you're out, nobody should be able to come to you and penetrate the walls of your relationship by just being able to tell you one or two things that your spouse is doing or is not doing, right? Nobody should be able to come to you and be like, me personally, nobody can come to me and tell me that Sam, my husband, did X, Y, and Z. Nobody can come tell me because we have that relationship. I know what's going on with me and my husband, right? So if you know what's going on with you and your husband or you and your wife, nobody else should be able to tell you outside of your four walls what's going on with your spouse. And if they are able to tell you, again, you don't want to make it seem like, oh my God, I didn't know this. And now you out there like, uh, and by the time you get home, you all in a rage and in a fit. Mm -mm. No, be, be a united front when you're outside. Be a united front. Another thing that Keisha brought up is be a united front, especially when your children, because children, when you have children, excuse me, when you have children, children are very smart and children will find a way. They, they look for the weak link in your relationship, not on purpose. It's just what we do as people and children are no different. They just happen to be younger than us, right? So they are looking for the weakest link within your relationship. And so what happens is if you're that weak person in the relationship, what they'll end up doing is every time dad comes around. So in my case, I'm the woman, right? So when dad comes around, my daughter, she'll try to go to my husband and ask him something that I told her that she can't do. Or if I'm telling her to do something that she don't like, then she'll, uh, excuse me, if, if um, my husband is telling her something that she doesn't like, then she'll try to come to me and ask me, you know, questions about how come she can't do this or you know mainly it's to get something to eat because that's the stage she's in she's always trying to get something to eat and one of us will tell her no and right now she'll try to go to the other person but but she also knows that even when she does that now at her two years of life she knows that if dad say no mom said no she know that if mom said no dad said no and if we don't keep that united front with her now, with her being so young, it's going to be even worse when she grows up. The more she grows up, she's going to notice that, okay, if I go and act a fool with dad, all I got to do is go over to mom and say, dad didn't let me do X, Y, and Z, and mom going to let me do it. Or vice versa. Kids are very smart. People outside your relationship are very smart. And if your foundation is rocky, guess what? Somebody going to be able to throw a pebble in there and the whole thing going to be able to come tumbling down. Be you have to keep your relationship strong. You have to become a team. It, it is a process. All of this stuff is a process to get to and grow through. It's a process. But it is doable if you're willing to put in the work and the time. And um, speaking of time, that's another thing. And becoming a power couple, you have to spend the time with your spouse so you're able to know exactly who your spouse is. So you'll be able to, when somebody comes to you, be like, nah, mm -mm. I hear what you're saying. Thank you. But mm -mm. that ain't my boo. That's not my spouse. That's not what they do. And it's okay. It's okay that they came and shared said thing, but you should not be able to let them say this very thing. And now you a fragile mess. Because you should know your spouse. You guys should be spending quality time together so you can get to know the person that you said I do to. And it's a continuous process. It's not something that, okay, I knew him for two, three, four months, and now all of a sudden things are changing. Right? No. Getting to know your spouse and spending quality time with your spouse 
That way you are continuously getting to know your spouse because we're all continuously growing. We're either growing together in the relationship or we're growing apart, but we're still growing. Yes, so becoming a power couple, spending quality time together, be a united front, be a team, and do, do not put your children first. Mommy. Right? What, what, baby? Here, go ahead. I'm right on this. Here. Okay. Another thing, another thing to become a, you, uh, excuse me, to become a power couple is make sure that you guys are communicating as much as possible. As much as possible about any and everything having those very tough conversations about any and everything really having those tough conversations about any and everything because uh when you when you guys stop talking that's when all of this up in here is gonna start getting to you and anything that you're thinking is happening nine times out of ten is not happening Nine times out of ten, it is something that you are thinking that is happening, but it is not happening at all. Because you have been scared for whatever reason to have this tough, tough conversation. And most of the time, you're scared to have this tough conversation because you already know the answer, but you don't like the answer. You already know what you should do, but you don't want to do it. So it's like, okay. It's kind of like that saying, out of sight, out of mind. So if I never have this conversation, then I can act like I really don't know what's actually happening, what's going on. But this is a way and a part of becoming a power couple. You have to communicate with your spouse to know exactly where he is, to know exactly where she is. On everything. Everything. Seriously, everything. Like, even if they try to come to you and bring something that you think is just super, super crazy. So let's go, for instance, maybe your spouse is into threesomes, right? Y'all never talked about it, but anytime he has seen or she, whoever, whatever the spouse is, has seen like a movie or something, they like, oh, I want to try that out. Or maybe they was listening to a friend talk about a threesome that they had, and now they thinking in their head, oh, I want to try that out too. It doesn't matter that you hate and despise and think it's super disgusting threesomes. Your spouse, your partner should still be able to come to you and be like, hey, baby, what you think about this? Hi. <laughs> yeah, my baby saying hi. It doesn't matter. I didn't say that you're going to like all of the conversations. I didn't say that you're going to like every piece of communication that's going to come your way. But it should be space. For, that, for your spouse to be able to come to you and talk to you about any and everything, no matter what. And all of the conversations that you and your spouse have together are not going to be pretty. They're not going to be fun all the time. But this is the way to become that power couple, at least a portion of it, a part of it on how you become a power couple. Your spouse should be able to come and talk to you about any and everything, whether you like it or not. Me and, my, me and my husband, we actually have relationship check-ins. Okay, all right, all right. They can see you. You already said it. Okay, okay, not right. We have relationship check-ins. Relationship check-ins are <laughs> those things where we have these. This is a way to make sure that we intentionally talk about the tough things that both of us need to say. It's not always pretty. It's not always fun. A lot of times I'm like, oh boy, not this again, because it's something that I didn't work on before. A lot of times he's saying, you know, he's re he's rebutting too, but we're both able to still bring said topic to, I'm able to bring said topic to him. He's able to bring said topic to me, no matter what, oh. no matter what, because this is going to be the only way that you keep your marriage tight that your partner feels like they know you, that you feel like you know your partner. That's it. Communication. It's a cliche because we hear it all the time. Communication is the key. Communication is the key. Communication is the key. Sis, bruh, it is the key. <laughs> it is the key to your relationship. It is one of the pieces of the puzzle when you're becoming a power couple. Many people think about the power couple. We always go back to Barack and Michelle. Some people um, talk about Jay-Z and Beyonce. Some people even talk about Kanye and um, uh, what's her name? Kim. 
whatever and whoever your definition of a power power couple is is just that and then what you do is you take the things that you like about what they're doing and you implement them into your own relationship yeah that's what you do but all of these power couples all of them have had to talk of the talk about the tough issues and they had to continuously and they still have the the, the tough conversations for sure the tough conversations they have them all the time and all the time for them and all the time for you might be completely different time frames but the point is they're still having them they're still having them yay so these are um just areas that you need to think about these are just some of the areas that we talk about that we spoke about yesterday but i wanted to come here again to make this and create this video because the audio quality on the last two lives that we did was just poor um the first portion of yesterday's video after about minute 20 it clears up so if you want to go back and hear what both of us have to say after about minute 20 you can go and click on that and then you'll hear the audio clear as day i don't have no idea we were trying to figure out no. why the audio was so poor but we never did figure it out anyway if you have any questions you can send them to me if you need any one-on-one -on -one coaching you can ask me i am here for one-on-one -on -one coaching send me a private message um or if you just have an issue that you need an answer to you're going through something I in particular know. I am a life and relationship strategist, and that's exactly what I do. I help men and women to create the relationship that they want, need, and desire by helping them to implement simple tips and proven strategies. All of the strategies that I give to my clients, I have used them myself in my own relationship. I continue to use... Stop it. Stop it. I continue to use them because I know this is what actually works. This is what actually works. And so I have to continuously implement and put these things in in there and use them each and every day if need be. But definitely weekly because that's what it's all about. This is what marriage is all about. It's a continuous weekly, well really it's a daily thing. But maybe you're the person where your spouse is in the military or a truck driver or something like that. There still should be some type of communication every single day, whether you guys are texting, whether you guys are FaceTiming or using Skype or whatever it is. You two can still be a very powerful couple, even if you're long distance for a period of time. It really is all about what you are willing to do to become that power couple. And if you have chose your spouse wisely, if you have chose your spouse wisely, wisely does not mean a perfect person, a perfect spouse. What you're looking, when I say wisely, I'm talking about your, um, you made sure that this person has zero or maybe one deal breaker. Meaning you made your deal breakers list and that person only has one of your deal breakers on there versus five to seven. I don't know how many deal breakers you have, but you get my drift. Only has one versus two, three, four, and five because if there's only one deal breaker out of many that your spouse is bringing to the table, then that is something you usually can stick around with and work with versus, you know what? I was lonely. I didn't ask enough questions. Now I'm here with this person. You, I might even have children with this person. I don't want this relationship go because I don't want to be a single parent. But you didn't ask enough questions. Y'all didn't spend enough time together. The time frame was very short. It was one of those, um, it was all in the honeymoon stage where everything was going peachy keen. You didn't give the relationship time to nourish and flow. Meaning, because everything was going good the first two months, five months, you decided to say, I do. And now the real person is showing up. And you like, oh my God, what did I do? There's still hope for you too, sis. There's still hope for you too, bruh. But you got to put in the work. You got to put in the energy. You have to figure out a way to actually converse with your partner and see what both of you, not one, see what both of you can work on to create and make your relationship that much better, that much healthier. Really, communication really is the key. But you got to be open. 
and you got to let down your walls and you got to be vulnerable and you got to open up and say, you know what? I am not the perfect person. I'm not the perfect wife. I'm not the perfect husband. I'm not the perfect parent, but I am trying. And the only way you and I can make a great relationship where we can become that power couple, we know that we're going to have challenges. But I want to be able to answer that question of why I got married. Why did I get married? In such a way where I'm not like, I wish I didn't. Or somebody asks you the question like, what's something that you don't like about your, your spouse? And your answer is, I don't like when they breathe. I don't like when they come in the room. I was actually talking about something little like, you don't like the way he snore. (laughs) Anyway, y'all, get ready to wrap this up. If you are interested, like I said, and you need some help, one-on-one coaching, I am your girl. You can send me a message. Also, I do have two Facebook groups where... One is for anybody that is dating, you're dating, you're trying to figure out this dating thing, and you're either in a relationship, a new relationship, you're wanting to move toward marriage, that one is for you, that that group is called Dating to Marriage, go ahead and send me a request for that one. My second group is for anybody that is engaged or married, and you're looking for information on being engaged and obviously enhancing, improving your marriage, that group is where you would um, put a request in. The name of that group is Relationship Bootcamp 101. Either either group that, that you fit in and you're interested in, you can send me a request. Thank you guys for listening. Sorry about the audio quality <laughs> uh, the past few days, but I came here to do a redo. Obviously, the chemistry was different with Keisha not being here, but as I mentioned, the information was just as important, so I wanted to make sure that I came here and gave it to you once again. I hope you guys have a wonderful, blessed day, and I will talk to you very soon. Deuces.